Star Trek? Well, I do. Obviously. Who likes Independence Day? I would like if I saw it. On the count of three, I want to hear Brent. Ready? One, two, three. Brent. I want to hear Spiner on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. Spiner. I want to hear Brent Spiner. Let's chant. Ready? Here we go. Brent. Spiner. Brent. Brent. Spiner. Brent. Spiner. Brent. Spiner. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you the infamous Mr. Brent Spiner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I asked this guy not to give me a huge introduction. <laughs> I said, just uh, be subtle if you can. And, uh, Brett Spider! Uh, okay, hi everybody. Hey! Here I am at uh, the fabulous. Uh, where is this? Uh, <laughs> cradle, of cradle of Aviation. It's in America. Aviation. You know why they call it the Cradle of Aviation? Why? Do you not know? <laughs> Are we going to do a one-man show together? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's two of us. That's right. Um, I guess why, why, because of Lindbergh, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever read that great biography by Scott Bird? Lindbergh? Sorry. Great biography. Nobody even knows what I'm talking about. Smile and nod. These are true stories. Uh, okay, um, so uh, here we are in an IMAX theater. Uh, he's not going to do that the whole time, is he? Is, no, okay, uh, he is? Oh, great. Uh, and uh, am I in 3D right now? It's, I think so. Who? Uh, yeah. More scary. like 40. Uh, well, it, did you want a photo? Did anyone want a photo? Go ahead, let's do some photos. Let's, let's get this over with. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Uh, well, I, uh, I am, uh, I did live in the, would you call this the, what is this, the tri-state area? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That was a total guess. Uh, no, this is the, uh, well, I used to live in... Long Island. No, not in Long Island. Who said that? Uh, can we get security, please? Uh, no, I, I actually lived in Manhattan uh, when, back in the day when you could afford to live in Manhattan. Um, uh, I, I drove a cab in New York City in the uh, 70s. Uh, they made a movie about me. Uh, did you ever see Taxi Driver? <laughs> it was about that time, actually. That, and it was very much like that. It was scary. But I didn't have to do it for too long because then I got a job as a waiter. And uh, no, no, I, I drove a cab until I got a job in the theater. Are you filming me right now? Really? I mean, is it that interesting? Yeah, it's, yeah I guess it is. Go ahead. Uh, and um, uh, anyway, I, I lived in, in New York City for 11 years. And then I, I uh, moved to California with a play called... Uh, I got a play in California. It was uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, wow. Mm. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. <laughs> oh, that's why you went. Ooh. Uh, yeah, I, I played Seymour in Little Shop of Horrors uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, I, I, I replaced a guy named Lee Wilkoff, a fantastic actor, very good friend of mine, uh, who created the part here in New York. And um, I auditioned to play the dentist in New York. And then all of a sudden they said, well, would you want to go out to L.A. and play Seymour? And I said, yeah. So I went to L.A. and... Uh, I did it uh, for three months, I think, and then um, I, the play ended, and I got a couple of jobs on TV, and I thought, this is too easy. <laughs> and uh, so I, I went back and forth for a while. I came back and did some more Broadway shows, and then I went back to L.A., and then I went back and did another Broadway show, and then I went back to L.A., and then I got Star Trek. Uh, well, first I got... <laughs> You've heard of that? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you went, ooh, yeah. Uh, and then I, uh, uh, I 
well, before that, I got a show called Night Court. Do you remember that? Yeah. yeah. That was a great show. And I was a, I was a, I did six episodes of Night Court, and they were going to bring us on as regulars in the next season. And during the hiatus, I got uh, Star Trek. So the woman who played my wife was out of a job. Uh, <laughs> She's still chasing me, trying to <laughs> destroy me, uh, as well she should. But, um, and then I came back after, after Star Trek, and I did uh, 1776 on Broadway. And then um, I, did, I didn't write it, I just <laughs> appeared in it. You know. uh, went back to L.A., did some things, and then I came back and did another play, and then I went back to L.A., and I haven't been back to New York since, until this very instant. <laughs> Thank you. It's so good to be back. <laughs> Thank you. Good to have um, you. Uh, what else can I tell you about? Uh, I'm doing a, I did a, a little movie uh, that's coming up um, at the end of this month. It opens, so a little picture I like to call Independence Day Resurgence. Woo! Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Uh, <laughs> See how I came back. I don't even know. Uh, and um, and then, and I'm on a television series right now called. Uh, it's on Cinemax. It's called uh, Outcast. The uh, oh yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah. No. Just applaud it because I said the words. It's, yeah. Uh, and it's on. Uh, it's on Cinemax. The it's uh, created by Robert Kirkman, who created Walking Dead. No zombies in this one, but it, it is scary. Uh, and uh, there you have it. That's the story of my life. It's been so nice talking to you. And, uh, I'd like to finish with a little song I wrote. No, I, I, I'd like to uh, take some questions from you guys. Yeah. I did write that, by the way. Life Forms? Yes. Uh, well, I tell you what, you know that song, Life Forms? It was in uh, Generations. Life Forms? You put a little life form? Oh. Yeah. Uh, I got to work that day, I had the script, it said, Data Sings, <laughs> Life Forms, dot, 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 et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> and we got ready to shoot it, and I said, well, wh wh where are the lyrics? And they said, well, just make something up. And I said, okay, what's the tune? And they said, just make something up. And so I, I did. And uh, several years later, like maybe two years ago, a guy contacted me and he said, did you did you make that song up? And I said, yeah. And he said, did you uh, register it with the musicians here, with ASCAP or, you know? I said, no. And he said, you really should because every time that plays, they should be paying you. <laughs> For years and years, they should have been paying me and they never did. And um, there's this thing that's been traveling around. It's some kind of a 50th anniversary orchestral thing. Do you know about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they play the music of Star Trek, and it's a big orchestra, oh, yeah. and, they, and it's gone from town to town to town, and they play the Lifeform song. And <laughs> no one has contacted me to say, can we use your song? And uh, so I'm suing Paramount Pictures for <laughs> a lot of money. Um, I'll be living in Paris next year uh, in a very beautiful chateau that once belonged to uh, King Louis XIV. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Uh, who, uh, where, where's, how's this gonna work? You have a, a, a mic, yep. and you're gonna run to wherever someone raises wherever their hand. Happened. What a good system. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Uh, whoever catches it has to ask a question. Yeah. Does anyone have a question? Oh, I see one, yeah, exactly. You see where he is? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, okay. we can read. Hang on a second. <laughs> Let me tell you an extra story while he gets up there. Um, did you hear about the Life Forms song? Did I tell you that? <laughs> so good. I already told it. What's that? No, no, right here. Don't make me run for You know, up. really, I, I mean, it is a, a perfect uh, acoustic situation here, so okay, say something to me. Hello, how are you? No, I, I didn't hear a word you said. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, no, I still I'll can't hear you. Hello, hello. <laughs> oh, there we are. Yeah. I, I've read some news articles that um, there's supposed to be some sort of new Star Trek series that's going to be online only, I think, on CBS. Uh-huh. And I was wondering whether you had any involvement with that. Uh, no, I have no involvement with it. Uh, yet. 
<laughs> but you never know. You, you know, you never say never. It could happen or not. Uh, or I could care or not. Um, <laughs> but I won't say which. Um, but, uh, yeah, I've heard about this thing. It's going to be on CBS. Apparently they're going to run the pilot free on CBS because uh, that's how generous they are. <laughs> and then they're going to make you pay for the rest of the episodes. Yeah. On, uh, well, yeah. You know, CBS has to make a living, too. Uh, Les Moonves runs CBS. You know, what did he bonus out at, like, 80 million last year? Um, we, they need your 10 bucks a month, I'm telling you. Uh, but it's going to be, uh, yeah, it's going to be CBS Access, I think it's called. And, and their, their uh, sort of tentpole thing is going to be Star Trek. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's not going to be the only thing you get for your 10 bucks. I think you get old uh, Beverly Hillbillies reruns as well. <laughs> so it's worth it. Um, and, uh, but, but seriously though, there, there's some really good talent involved in that show. Uh, I know Brian Fuller, who wrote for one of the Star Trek series and has written really cool things subsequently, like Hannibal and uh, um, the, uh, the Pushing Daisies. Uh, was that what it was called? Yeah. And uh, he's really talented. He's the head writer, I believe. And a um, bunch of people I've read about who are involved in the production itself. And it's a really... Already? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Get back here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to get there. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm looking forward to it, as I know you are. Uh, what was your question? Oh, am I involved in it? Not yet. We'll see what happens. I mean, they could ask me. I don't think I could play Data again. Certainly not for less than a few million dollars. <laughs> but before... Uh, well, that would sort of be like playing Data again. And uh, yeah, I just, I, I'm too old. Look at me. We don't care. <laughs> I know. I look fantastic, I know. But I, I can't still do Oh, thank you. I never, ever say that about myself. So thank you so much for saying that. Here, you get a mic. I, I can't do this by myself. Uh, um, Yes, sir, right here. Oh, oh. wait, you had another one? Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, hi. Oh. Um, it's Jess, the girl that I was, like, talking to, like, really recently. Oh, Jess. Yes, the one I, with the music don't. tattoos. I remember perfectly Jess. Oh, <laughs> yeah. awesome. All right. Uh, as we spoke, um, I'm a musician, and being someone of the arts, I'm really curious. What was your inspiration to basically become in the arts, as you said, in the theater and stuff like that? I'd really love to pick your brain on what basically inspired you to become this, which led you to become as famous as you are today. You did. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was hoping, yeah. No, I'll tell you what, Jess. Uh, I had the advantage of having a really good teacher. And that is so important. And I, I was so lucky. Uh, when I was in high school, I had a teacher who was one of those people that you dream about. Who who, change, who changes your life, uh, seriously. And uh, so for any teachers here, really, believe me, it makes so much difference. I mean, this guy, more than anything, uh, gave me a feeling that, uh, I, that what I had to offer was valuable. And um, that's so important. It, everybody needs that. Everybody needs encouragement. And I had it from high school on. And... and uh, so I, I, I treasure that, that man in my life who, who, who gave me that. And he did it, by the way, for many people. Uh, I, went to, uh, I went to the Strasbourg Institute here in New York when I got out of college and, uh, for a brief time and uh, between my cab driving gigs. And um, I, I have never seen another person uh, who was in my classes at Strasbourg that I can remember, that I know of. Uh, my high school drama class, I see people in show business all the time. Uh, both of the Quaid brothers, Randy and Dennis, were in my high school drama class. Uh, a guy named Tommy Shlami, who created The West Wing with Aaron Sorkin, and many TV series after that. 
Just so many. And um, so he was he was an inspiration, this guy. And so, you know, if you're a teacher, you know, you're doing a great thing. Just keep encouraging your students. Yeah. All right, we're going to try lining everyone here for okay. questions instead of me having run around the whole place. Yeah, it's, it's, we're, it's just like we're inventing a whole new way of doing this right here. And you're part of it. Evolution. Evolution, exactly. That last question was great. I want to say that, by the way. I loved your answer. Oh, thank you. And my, my question is going to be very strange compared to it. Okay, are you going to comment on every question? Or? Absolutely not. Sir. Okay, good. I don't good. have time. Oh, but you do have a question. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Do you remember a fellow named Brent Mintz who took pictures of flowers? I remember Brent Mintz very well. Uh, I went to high school with him. Uh, did you? No, that's the name you used when you were on to tell the truth, and that's what you said you did for a living, is you took pictures of flowers. Is that what I said? Yes, the 1974 version of to tell the truth. Have you seen that? Yes, I have. I'd love to see that. I may be on Game Show Network, I don't know, but I always saw that, I have always remembered it. Wow, that's really right. I, I did, uh, okay, I had this name other than Brent Spiner, I was Brent Mintz. That was not really my name. My name was Brent Spiner. Uh, I was born Brent Spiner. Uh, my father passed away when I was very young. My mother remarried. The guy's name was Mintz. He adopted my brother and myself, and uh, we and changed our names. Uh, then we got rid of him, and he. Uh, uh, and and I went to New York to be an actor, and I thought I cannot spend the rest of my life being known as Brent Mintz. So. I'm going to be Brent Spiner. I got my. I knew I was going to be reviewed by the New York Times, and I thought, now's the time. So I went to the Screen Actors Guild and to Actors Equity, changed my name back to my real name, which is Brent Spiner, and the rest is history. But I. Now wait a minute. Uh, 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 I heard. Stop. Uh, unless you want to talk about to tell the truth. Actually, my question was. Um, I heard. Um, yeah. I, you know what? It's okay. Don't worry. It's going to happen. Uh, and it's going to be a fantastic question, and everybody's going to love it and you. <laughs> Don't worry. Uh, but, but I was just going to finish this gentleman's thing about to tell the truth. So I came to New York, and um, my name was officially still Brent Mintz, and I didn't have any money. And this is even before I got a cab driving job. And I read in, in the paper that you could be an imposter on to tell the truth. Do you remember that show? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you're bringing the and that, that depending on how many people voted for you, uh, you made more money. And, uh, and there were four panelists, Bill Cullen, uh, Nipsey Russell, uh, you know, those kind of guys. And uh, Gary Moore was the host. And uh, so what they did was there was this one guy was real and the other two were imposters. And the real guy was a cab driver from Denver who played the trumpet. And... His, his whole thing was he played the trumpet in his cab and he could play, he would ask his fares what they, you know, requests and he could play anything they wanted. And that was his big secret. Um, so I was pretending to be this guy. I was one of the imposters. And um, I remember Nipsey Russell was the, one of the panelists and he asked me, What's, what song do you most... Uh, play, do you think, was most requested in your cab? And I said, when the red, red robin comes bob, bob, bobbing along. And uh, he said afterwards he knew I was not the real guy when I said that. I got zero votes. <laughs> it was a two-day event, and, uh, and I made very little money doing it, but I was on TV. And from that appearance on TV, I got night court. No, I didn't. Actually, I, nobody saw it except that guy. And I didn't even see it. I'd like to see it, though. It's on YouTube, you think? But what would I say? I mean, how many to tell the truth are on uh, you, you, Brent Mintz, it was, Brent Mintz on YouTube. Could, would you do it for me? Yeah. To, to Brent Mintz, To Tell the Truth. Uh, and maybe 1970, what was it? Uh, 71, 72, something like that. 
Everything? Oh, no. <laughs> um, okay, well, I'll check it out. Are you checking it out for me right now? I can see you doing that. You're, you don't get any service in here. Oh, well, okay. It's not that important, really. I mean, I've gone, you know, 50 years without seeing it again. So. All right, you know what? I, have, I am on the edge of my seat right now waiting for your question. Hello again. Uh, I heard uh, that you do a very good impersonation of Patrick Stewart. I was wondering if you could do your impersonation of Patrick Stewart that I've heard so much about. Uh, no. Also, I saw that episode and I <laughs> Which, I did six episodes. Which one did you see? I don't remember the name of it. Sorry. You are such a liar. <laughs> and you've never heard that I did an impression of Patrick Stewart. You're just making that up right now. No, I did. No. No, I did, because uh, you did it on The View once, I heard. And on The View? Right. I've never been on The View. <laughs> but I do know Whoopi. Yeah. <laughs> it's my mistake. Yeah. It's all right. People make mistakes. You won't be punished. Get him out of here. Uh, all right. No. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. I never... You know, when I was here on Broadway with my friend Ian McKellen, we did Waiting for Gato. Did anyone see it? Yes. Did he ever show up? He did. You know, I'd like to introduce you to my friend. Ian McKellen. Yeah. Why, thank you, Patrick. Nice to meet you. Well, thank you, Ian. Nice to meet you. I sound exactly alike. <laughs> Patrick says, uh, when I was playing Gandalf. I know. Uh, yes, ma'am. Hey. My question is, what is your favorite episode of Star Trek that you acted in? You know what, I've said this before, people ask me that question, but I, I don't, I, I, I particularly like the episodes that, that featured the character of Data. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why, I just, I love the guy. Um, no, I didn't really have a favorite. I, to be honest with you, I've only seen about 20 episodes of the show, in, in the first 20 probably, because i tired of it. No, I, I, um, I, I felt like it was redundant, that I was reading them, and then I was acting in them, and then I, I needed to watch them. What for? I knew what was going to happen. Uh, so I stopped watching it. Um, maybe I'll see them one day. Uh, I think, though, you know, I had a good time doing a lot of them, uh, almost all of them, because the cast, we laughed all day long, uh, seriously, including Patrick. And... Um, uh, but I liked uh, uh, Measure of a Man, I think, is a particularly good episode. Um, I, I don't remember the names of any of the others. I think any of uh, there was one called uh, Data something, and uh, <laughs> another one called Data something. Um, Data's Day, that's another one. Um, and, uh, but, but I don't really have a... It, it felt to us like we were doing one long episode that lasted for seven years. Uh, seriously, it was like, uh, we would finish some episodes at three o'clock in the afternoon and begin the next one and go until four in the morning and then, you know, they just kept going. So to distinguish between them, it was really difficult for me because I, I, you know, I didn't see them. But uh, I heard they were really good. <laughs> hey. Um, I have a question about the Independence Day 2 movie coming out. Okay. Um, how much are you inside the movie? Do you think it's going to be good? Wait, say that again. Ask me the first part. How much are you... Inside the movie. Inside the movie. <laughs> Is it be supposed to outside the movie? <laughs> yeah. And well, I'm outside the movie more than I'm inside. <laughs> and do you think it's going to be good? Do I think it's going to be good? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think... Uh, I, I, I'm in the movie. I think more than I was in the last one. How much? I don't know. Because it's a big movie and with a lot of characters. And, um, uh, but I do have sort of a story that's a little more uh, 
slightly more more of a story than I had last time. And um, uh, I think it's going to be good. I have to say that. <laughs> I'm contractually obliged by 20th Century Fox to say, I think it's going to be great. Uh, I think it may be one of the great films of all time. Um, I mean, right up there with, you know, there's going to be Schindler's List, <laughs> Independence Day Resurgence, uh, Gandhi, exactly. Um, no, I, I'm hoping it's going to be great. I haven't seen it. Uh, it looked, like, you know, dazzling, what I have seen of it. There's, I saw the trailer at X-Men. You know, it's, it looks amazing. So we'll see. And it's got some terrific actors in it. And uh, I can't wait to see it. Where have you been? <laughs> no, seriously, where have you been? I'm lost. You were getting Karen Gillan's autograph, right? It was a good one. All right. Uh, did you forget something? <laughs> Hi, Bob. Oh, he's yours. Good. All right. <laughs> um, okay, who's next? Up here. All the way up there. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can't That's all right. No worries. Hi. Hey. Just want to say uh, uh, we loved... Uh, we loved Next Generation. We thought all you guys were great, but especially you and Patrick. I think uh, the two of you were the, the, the greatest actors uh, amongst the group. Thank you. Um, Thank my you. question is, uh, Fred Spiner, yeah. the, do you, do you, uh, are you a cat person like Data was? Uh, <laughs> yes and no. Uh, yes and no. I, I, I do not have a cat. Uh, I, I have a dog. Uh, I have a Weimariner, and uh, her name is Siva, and she's such a great friend and creature. I, I love dogs, uh, but but I love cats too. I just don't have to have one. Um, I did not like Spot. Uh, I, I did not like. I personally, Spot was fantastic, sweet, beautiful cat. Terrible actor. Uh, seriously, maybe the worst actor I've ever worked with. Uh, and they wrote things for Spot to do that this cat could not possibly do. And just to irritate me. Um, and uh, so people, I don't know, I get this, uh, I have this reputation that I hated this cat or I hate cats. or It's so untrue. I don't know how these things start. I mean, really, I, I, I love cats. I just did a a PSA, a public service thing. I, I don't know if you've seen it yet. I haven't, but uh, apparently they're introducing legislation here in the state of New York to prohibit uh, removing claws from cats. And uh, where have they ever got the idea that would be a good thing to do? Is let's tear their claws out so they don't mess up our furniture. You know, it's like with dogs. I don't understand dogs that they cut their tails off. You know, really? Is that necessary? I, so anyway, I did this PSA sort of thing where I, I said, uh, you know, basically if you don't like the way nature delivered these animals, maybe you shouldn't have one. And um, yeah, don't you think? Uh, and, and, which is why I don't have a cat. Uh, no, 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 it's not. It's not. I, I love them and I, I want them to stay whole and happy and uh, if I had one, I know I'd adore it, but I, I am more of a dog person. Yeah. Anyone else? Is there a... Yeah, we're back here. Oh, we're back there. Hi, thank you for being here, Brent. Pleasure. Uh, I wanted to ask you, um, was there a particular favorite that you liked working with out of uh, the cast? You mean yeah, the cast, cast, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know what, I really, we loved, I loved everybody. We really got on very, I mean, we, without, Dorn I didn't care for, but uh, <laughs> the rest of them were just wonderful, and uh, we all got on very well, and I'm only joking about that. Michael is probably the nicest of all of us, um, except me, of course, but he is, he is a really nice guy. No, 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 we're all still very close friends. Uh, I see them all the time. I had lunch with LeVar last weekend. I, I see Dorn all the time. I talk to Patrick a lot. Uh, I did uh, uh, another episode of Blunt Talk with Patrick this season, well. and, uh, which is a hilarious show, isn't it? I mean, have you seen Blunt Talk on Stars? 
How funny is Patrick on that show? It was just great. And uh, so I did another episode as Phil, the piano player, and um, uh, I'm hoping next season to be uh, Blunt Talk and Phil, uh, the piano player. Anyway, we'll see. Hey. Hi, thank you for being here today. Yeah. I have two questions. First one is, what was the intention of B4 and with the death of data, the premise behind it or the continuation of Next Gen if they did it in another movie? Yeah. And the second one is, was there any aspect of data you disliked playing? Why do I get the impression you already know the answers, Dolph? <laughs> That's what I'm here for you. Oh, okay. Um, uh, uh, what was the purpose of B4? Well, B4 was, a, he was just in the movie. I mean, it was part of the plot, you know? It was, uh, and, and it allowed us to have a fail-safe if... Uh, but that wasn't the only fail-safe, by the way. We had a couple of other ideas. Had we come back for another movie, Obviously, Data had downloaded all of his memories into B4, and B4 was going to evolve gradually and then become Data. But um, I, I think it could have gone in all kinds of directions, actually. It didn't have to be like that. Uh, what, what? I just want to know, did you, did you ask to have Data die in the script, or was it an idea that came to you and said, we're going to make him die? Or? Yes, it was my idea. Oh, it was? Yeah, okay. yeah, but no, it really was, actually. I, I, was, I, wrote, this, uh, I wrote this story with uh, a tremendous writer named John Logan. He's probably the number one screenwriter in the world today. And uh, he co-wrote <coughs> Nemesis. We co-wrote the story with Rick Berman. And um, John, by the way, John Logan, he wrote uh, Hugo. He wrote uh, Gladiator. He wrote The Aviator. He wrote... Uh, I mean, he's working right now. He just he just finished the new Alien that's getting made. Uh, he completely created and wrote every word of the series Penny Dreadful that's on Showtime. I mean, he's just one of the great writers. And um, so one day we were talking, and I said, you know, I think this is the last movie we're going to make. Uh, this cast, and they pretty much told us this is it for you guys. So we thought, well, let's let's uh, end it with you know, some kind of real emotional payoff for the audience who's been on this journey all this time. And uh, we gotta end it, we gotta let Dana go because we know he's not coming back for another one, we were pretty sure. And I was really sure that I was probably not coming back because I was too old. And, um, uh, and people didn't really love it that we killed Dana. Uh, in general, I got a lot of, uh, uh, Hate mail is the word, yes. Uh, but I'll tell you what, uh, what you probably don't know is that you were, as you were leaving the theater that night, behind you on the screen, the Enterprise blew up and killed everybody else. And, uh, because you've never seen anyone else either. Who cares? If, at least you got closure with Data. You got nothing with the other characters. They're floating out in space somewhere. You don't even know what happened to them. I know what happened to them. But I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> now, what was the second part of that? Oh, um, it, any aspect of data you dislike playing? Is there more than one of you here? That was slow. I mean, you're wearing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, as far as Starfleet, they were in different ships, though. So. Don't I know it? Uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, uh, was there an aspect of data I didn't like? Uh, the contacts. Oh. Mm. I, I, I wish I didn't have to wear the makeup. You know, I said to Gene Roddenberry, we did all these makeup tests at the beginning, and they were, uh, I, I was every color under the rainbow in these makeup tests, and we put them all on a reel, and we took them into Gene to show him, and the first one that came up, he went, okay, that's good. And I went, why, why did I have to go through all of this? And, but then I said to him, look, Gene, don't you think... What was that? <laughs> yeah, but it was behind me. <laughs> uh, it, I said, don't you think, Gene, that I could play this character without makeup? I could be convincing as an android. Don't you think by the 20th century they would have figured out how to make an android that had skin like a human and, you know, blah, blah. And his answer was, what makes you think what you have isn't better than skin? 
that's why you're Gene Roddenberry. Yeah. <laughs> so I did it, and, uh, but I didn't love wearing that makeup because I was the first one in every morning and I was the last one to leave every night because it took just as long to get it off as it, got, it took to get it on. So that, that would be my only regret. Everything else was great. Thank you. Yeah. Are you still over there? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hello, oh, thanks for the autograph, by the way. Hey, man. Hey. hey. Well, anyway, my question is, what was it like wearing that makeup every single damn day? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is it like... <laughs> What is it like to not listen when a person speaks? <laughs> uh, what was it like wearing the makeup like every single day? <laughs> All right, uh, uh, uh. you know what? I, I'll go there. What the heck? You know? It, you know? I didn't love it. I. Uh, it took just as long to get off as it took to put on, and, and I had to wear it 16 hours a day. And I would say. That would be the only thing I didn't like about the character. Uh, it's the makeup, probably. Um, <laughs> but great question. Thank you, man. <laughs> Anyone else want to know about the makeup? Uh, yeah. We got ten minutes. That's that's ten minutes is what that means. But ten minutes is a long time. You can see because he's already bored and leaving. And, uh, oh no. Thank you. You as well. Uh, yeah, I, I was curious. I, I would say of most of the characters, you probably had the most extensive dialogue as far as with the scientific terminology. Yes. And when you played people like uh, Laurel or uh, Dr. Soon, or even, if, even in A Fistful of Datas, which I think was one of your best episodes, Thank you. you got a chance to really expand on that. Yeah. It wasn't just one, one scientific thing yet. How do you feel about that? Uh, well, you know what? Uh, I agree. I mean, uh, my stomach used to turn over when I'd see what I had to say the next day. Uh, seriously, I'd be working. We would, did 16-hour days, uh, and that doesn't include the makeup. That's from the minute you start shooting till the end of shooting. And uh, so I had to put makeup on and take it off. I don't know if you've heard about that yet, but uh, I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I... <laughs> That was an unforgettable moment. But, uh, but, uh, uh, but then I would go home and uh, I'd have to take a shower to get the rest of everything off that didn't come off. And uh, I generally would order a Domino's pizza and uh, get in the shower. And by the time I got out, the, the doorbell was ringing. And I'd open the script and look at it and, and really almost faint to look at what I had to say the next day. Because it was... They weren't words that you normally say. Yeah. And uh, so I had this deal with myself that I had to be able to say it all at least one time perfectly or I couldn't go to sleep. And because uh, if I could do it one time, then I knew that by morning I could, I could you know, the next day I'd be able to do it. And, uh, and I also learned very early on that you had to do it out loud. Uh, seriously, because if you did it in your head, you thought you knew it. We had a lot of guest stars, really good actors, who would come on and they'd start to do it and then they'd stumble. And um, they'd, they always said the same thing, I knew it last night. And I'd say, yeah, but did you do it out loud last night? And, uh, and then there was Dorn, who didn't have all that much and never got it right, ever. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the outtakes from the show, but we used to be on the bridge because uh, he was on the back of it. And you could see it on Patrick's face, you could see it on Jonathan's face. We're all just waiting for it because in seven years, he never delivered a first take, ever. Uh, Captain, the murderer's <laughs> We knew it was coming. There was just no way. And, um, but, uh, but that was really difficult. It, 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 I got better at it. You know, memory is, I mean, the, the memory is a muscle, and it, it, you do get better at it. And I could do it pretty well as time went on. But we had guest stars like, uh-oh, oh, Mandrake the Magician's leaving. <laughs> so long, Mandrake. Uh, we had, uh, uh, we had, 
some really great guest stars, but we had uh, Mick Fleetwood from Fleetwood Mac did the show. And uh, Mick actually shaved, he's a great guy, by the way, but he actually shaved a beard he had for 40 years, I think, just to play a, a fish on our, our show. <laughs> he had the head of a fish. He played seafood on our show and, and shaved his beard for that. But he had one word, to do, he beamed in, and the word was food. <laughs> and he couldn't remember it. And, uh, and that's not that difficult, really, uh, food. You, anyone here could probably do it. But Mick was, uh, he was tense. He wanted to deliver. And he would beam in, and they would go, and he would go, <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the word? Uh, the food, Mick. Oh, yeah, food. Uh, let's do it again. Uh, finally, they had to bring a card in that said food on it. Uh, and even then, he could hardly do it. It was, no, but, but yeah, the, the dialogue was, was difficult. Did you like working with Denise Crosby? Did I like working with Denise Crosby? You had a relationship with her. Well, I, I think so. Data had a relationship, but she was, she was actually married. Uh, so, you know, when those doors closed, well, I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> But I just saw Denise. We were just in Seattle together at uh, a museum there. The, um, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 what's that guy's name? Uh, 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 Paul Allen's museum. The, it's a sci-fi and rock and roll museum. EMP. Really cool. Huh? EMP museum. EMP museum, right. We were just there, and uh, it was great hanging out with Denise at all these days. She's, she's a delight. She really is. Uh-huh. Hey, so I know you probably get this question a lot, but before Data got his emotion chip, right? He got that in Generations, was it? Um, what was it like to turn off the emotion, like, as a person, to have to tone down the emotions that you were just feeling as a person, you know? It was really easy. Uh, <laughs> no, it really was, because uh, what you saw was, was not necessarily the first take. You know, sometimes in the first take, we start laughing, and uh, particularly when it was a really serious scene. The more serious the scene, the more difficulty we had restraining ourselves. So we would just die laughing. Uh, so by the time you actually printed a take, uh, I could pretty well contain myself. Yeah, it wasn't that hard. Plus, I'm not that emotional. I'm sort of uh, ice cold, really. Uh, what's that? No, please. Join me. Do you sing? No. Okay. Uh, uh, we have, I guess, one last question, because this young lady's afraid of heights, so I'm oh, just going to give her the mic. You're afraid of heights? Oh, yeah, I am too. No, I, I am afraid of heights, honestly. Yeah. I don't even like to stand up if I, if I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm best at laying down. I mean, this is really like... Okay. We know you will, uh, you've done TV, Broadway movies, but where, which one would, do you love? Which one would you do if you... Couldn't do the other. Yeah, you couldn't do the other one. Which one would you continue to do? Why can't I do the others? Uh, <laughs> well, we're trying to invent this world you're talking about where you can only do one thing. And my heart. My heart is in the Highlands. No, my heart, my heart is in San Francisco. <laughs> it's the loveliness of Paris. No, I won't do that. Uh, I, uh, uh, you know what? Really, I, they're all the same. Really, uh, yeah. Acting is acting. Uh, it's just a matter of size. You know, if you're on stage, you have to speak louder. Um, if you're if you're on on film, big film, big screen like this, you just have to think. Uh, and, and you get it. Uh, and on television, you know, the screen's a little smaller, so you have to give a little bit more, but not that much more. But it's really a matter of size and frame. I remember what a one, two, three. Hmm? One, two, three. Broadway, TV. Yeah. Uh, uh, at this point in my life, I would say films. I would, I would rather do films than anything else. Because it, it, there's a limit to how long they run. Usually, a, a big film's four months or something, and then you get a, a break. And also because uh, I, uh, you know, I they have they have better food. Uh, 
the, the craft service is way better. Uh, they put your makeup on for you. At this age, I'd rather somebody do it for me, go get me things. Uh, stuff like that. I'm spoiled, you know. <laughs> but I love the theater, and I hope to get back to New York and do a play someday. So we'll see. And if I do, I trust you'll all be there. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone. Great talking to you. Sorry that I turned that way the whole time, but this is my good side. So <laughs> thanks, everyone. Thanks.